So a couple of uh, points from uh, Andy's book that re-emphasize what uh, we already saw. Uh, this is a bit on uh, IPATH equation that we looked at uh, in terms of uh, energy intensity of the GDP and carbon intensity of the energy and the overall effect including population which uh, evolved in the 1960s as or maybe 70s as the IPATH equation uh, impact population affluence and technology so that's the equation uh, in impact is a product of total number of people consuming things, economic good divided by population, you can think of GDP per capita and then pollutant per economic good or consumption uh, impact per unit of consumption. This is expressed in different ways. So affluence just means per capita GDP or your ability to consume. Uh, and uh, technology basically means impact of uh, each unit of consumption, let's say, okay? So this uh, paper here tries to add other details that are not missing, uh, I mean, not considered when you uh, 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 aggregate everything into these simple things. Of course, this has a uh, uh, certain charm in terms of its simplicity, but impact can also depend on gender equity, which affects birth rate and population. It can also affect ethics, spirituality and consumption, and uh, the ethics can also be affected by uh, can affect uh, literacy and gender equity in return, art can affect ethics, uh, policy can affect consumption, regulations, uh, let's say we decided to set a 10 ton per uh, person limit on carbon footprint and attributed uh, everybody to uh, a portfolio where you can choose multiple things. You can consume more meat but you have to make up by driving less, you can fly more but you have to make up by eating less and so on and so forth. So policy can uh, technically affect uh, consumption or per capita GDP or, uh, or how it's used, but policy can also affect non-sustainable development and sustainable development uh, to which uh, decides the net impact and non-sustainable development of course will affect uh, pollutant or impact per unit of consumption. So you can see how it is a, a basket for a lot of information if you do it this way but uh, one has to be aware of what's implicit and what's explicit uh, in the affluence and technology and as we said before population can be misleading because uh, reduced population doesn't necessarily mean reduced consumption and in fact rich people are having fewer kids to give them more wealth per person per child so that they can consume more per child. <laughs> That's not always the way we imagine uh, environmental uh, uh, impact by reduced population, right? So number of people multiplied by uh, total GDP divided by person for a country uh, times the uh, amount of CO2 per unit of GDP. So you can think of this as per capita income or per capita consumption, potential consumption if you will, because the same per capita GDP doesn't end up with the same amount of carbon footprint or consumption uh, for every person, but we are aggregating uh, averages anyways. And uh, how much CO2 is emitted per by per capita a uh, per GDP unit is also dependent on uh, the energy intensity of uh, the carbon intensity of the energy that is driving GDP, for example. So that determines the total amount of CO2 uh, emitted. So you can cancel these, just cancel these, and be left with CO2. That's how the equation works. So if you look at evolution of these things over time for the last several decades, population affluence, carbon intensity, and energy intensity for the entire world uh, relative to values in 1970. So obviously there is a large disparity in the way these things are uh, distributed over uh, a country, uh, different countries, continents, or even within a country over uh, populations and neighborhoods, right? In a city, you will have people living a very high affluent lifestyle uh, with high emissions, whereas there will be poor people living in slums with much lower impacts. So value relative to 1970, um, 
uh, goes up to 1 at 1970 and then some things have dropped so energy intensity of the GDP has dropped as we've seen before especially for some countries but many details are hidden in there for example C uh, US has moved from more carbon intensive fossil fuels to less carbon intensive fossil fuels like natural gas uh, but the emissions still go up so this doesn't necessarily mean total emission goes down because GDP GDP goes up, so even if uh, energy intensity of the GDP goes down, total emissions can still go up. Carbon intensity of energy production is going down, which is good news because renewables play in, or again you are s shifting from coal to natural gas or coal to gas uh, oil, so you have to be still careful there. Decarbonization is still the best way. So population has increased but uh, annual rate of population increase is dropped fertility rates have dropped even for China and India as I've said many times and GDP per person has grown so GDP has grown because population has grown uh, hence GDP per person has grown uh, so is this good news not really if you look at total emissions plus this uh, from uh, natural national geographic bit, bit dated uh, shows how IPAT has worked out. So if you think about uh, the three axes of technology, so patent applications uh, on this axis since 1900 to 1950 uh, to uh, whatever 2000 something and population worldwide uh, has gone from 2 billion to 2.5 billion to uh, 7 billion and affluence here in co in terms of world GDP has gone from 2 trillion to 5.3 trillion to 55 trillion but the point is that uh, population is not the biggest uh, driver here neither is technology but affluence is so uh, with times uh, height scale uh, ti height times length of three boxes representing the human impact on the planet in 1900, 1950 and 2011. So uh, in population, uh, is population growth the root cause or is it affluence which leads to greater consumption of energy and other resources or technology which offers new tools for exploiting and consuming. Obviously our energy intensive lifestyles are driven by more and more technological gadgets which we cannot live with that we talked about from iPhones to everything else. The iPad formula is a way of thinking about the issue. It says the three factors compound. Since 1900 world GDP a measure of uh, affluence A and the number of uh, patent applications a measure of technology T have grown even faster than population. So again main point I would leave with is it's very easy to say population is a problem and it is uh, in terms of habitat pressures, conflicts with wildlife, pressure on natural resources but if we just want to focus on emissions and its role in determining global warming then one has to be careful and look at affluence and technology as well. Okay, So we'll come back and look at uh, the uh, emissions and uh, economy, uh, climate economy which uh, we will revisit. We have seen some aspects of it but here we will pay a little bit more attention to um, interest rates, discount rates, exponential growth uh, and limitations on exponential growth. Systems with uh, exponential growth are inherently limited uh, eventually so even the population growth which became super exponential uh, over time in the last few decades is now hit a limitation hopefully and uh, many projections say it will not only flatten out but may begin to drop uh, not in the Malthusian disaster sense where Malthus said that food production grows linearly but population grows exponentially so starvation, malnutrition and other things will end up killing a lot of people and Population Bomb, a book written by Paul Ulrich I think uh, by his wife as well uh, as co-authors uh, turned out to be not so true because the Green Revolution and food production uh, exceeded 
population growth rates and we ended up n uh, not limiting population especially because medicine modern medicine led to uh, extended lifespans and drop in child mortality rates and so on so population did grow exponentially but impacts are n now dominated by affluence and technology and population has uh, seems to have hit the limitation and uh, maybe dropping uh, but that is more related to women and how they see uh, childbearing as uh, a responsibility or how it is related to their uh, affluence and education and so on this we have talked about several times so we will look at economy from the point uh, of um, growth rates uh, discount rates for the future and so on okay